Indeed, what a day. And for more insight into NVIDIA's success and the rising demand for the AI chips, we're joined by cybersecurity expert Scott Schober. Scott's also the president and CEO of Berkeley Baritronic System. Scott, welcome to the program. Um, I want to get right to it. Let's talk more about the reaction to NVIDIA's earning. As John aptly pointed out there, it really brought up the, the level of all ships. The rising tide benefited uh, the entire market. And its growth, I think year to year, I may be wrong, but it was close to 789%. John also mentioning it's going to be difficult to keep that up. I would be stunned if they were able to keep that up. Yeah, it is pretty astounding when you think about their growth, but they've been doing this a long time. Their background and their history, they really have expertise in GPUs, graphic processing units. If you think back to the days of the Xbox when it was launched from Microsoft, they're really behind that to give that in incredible graphics. Now fast forward and take it to the next level, the artificial intelligence semiconductors that they're using, now they're not cheap, but the demand is far greater than anybody ever anticipated. Just Meta alone has about 350,000 of their uh, semiconductors on order. And, and they sell for upwards of about $100,000 for an AI semiconductor. You're talking big, big numbers there. And they've got over 40,000 companies that they've closely worked with and partnering with. So I, I think there's a lot more room to go on this stock. It wouldn't surprise me in the next six months if it doesn't soar above 1,000. But it's really the technology behind it. That's the exciting mm. part because it's the start of an industrial revolution. And that's what I don't think a lot of people get yet. They're so focused on the stock price, this and that. I look at the company. It's huge. They're, they're right. in the top five as far as valuations, over a trillion dollar valuation. That to me is impressive but even more so the technology behind it. Yeah, let's talk more about the technology behind it and why that is having such an incredible ripple effect throughout the market. So explain that to our viewers. Yeah, well, I think if you think about AI, for the te past 10 years, I've heard every company says, hey, we use AI, we use machine learning. They don't exactly. This is actually real artificial intelligence, and they're, they're allowing it to be interfaced to different things, text, speech, vision and optics, and that allows different types of input to really charge the AI to do something practical. Now companies look at it and say, wow, this can actually be a game changer in the medical community, in logistics, in so many different verticals. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's starting to happen. They're seeing that there actually is a tremendous return that they can get to improve efficiencies above what normal humans can do in typical CPUs, computing power. Right. This is a totally different generation and, and much more exciting. Now, Scott, let's talk about the significant collaborations on AI between NVIDIA and other companies, most recently between NVIDIA and Nokia. Why is that so important? And is that part of the reason you believe that their potential for growth is really sky high? Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. You look at just the, the Nokia example recently about cloud ran. You look at cloud, it's taken off, but it goes to a point. And now you've obviously got cybersecurity concerns. You've got 5G technology finally kind of catching up with everything. And at the forefront of that is what? NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. They are using AI and partnering with companies like Nokia that could take this wireless revolution to the next level and do things that we can't even imagine. That's where it's exciting. And, and they've partnered with Google and Amazon and Microsoft, so many other companies. Now two, those companies are on their own trying to develop their own right. AI semiconductors, but they're behind, that's the problem. And, you know, and I think you also touched on something I, I would like to bring out because NVIDIA sells some chips, perhaps not its, well, it's certainly not its, its, its highest potential chip, but they sell chips to China. Now, why is that important? And what does that mean for the growth potential as well? well? Well, there, it actually stifled the growth to China because of um, different embargoes and, and China saying, no, you, you, you can't ship here. So they quickly had to spin another version of the chip so they still could ship and meet, meet the export control stuff so they could get it into China. But that really hurt them. So there was some loss there, but it was ludicrous amounts of sales and demand for other countries, and that kind of made up for it. And again, remember, this is a Taiwanese owner, it's American, mm. of the company, NVIDIA. Um, so they don't always play fair necessarily with China, and they were manufacturing with um, a Taiwanese semiconductor company. Now, Intel, just recently they announced, is going to be the foundry 
for the next generation of, of all of these AI semiconductors. So pretty impressive to be able to meet that demand and, and partner with Intel is going to be incredible. It may sound like a, a pretty simple question, but how are AI chips just dominating the industry right now? Well, again, because there's so many verticals, so much demand, and everybody wants to get into it. It's the secret sauce of many companies realizing, hey, we could make a lot more money when we bring AI into this because it's going to make things smarter, better, faster, and it's going to drive customers to different businesses and verticals. It's going to be used to concentrate on how do we solve cancer and, and some of the biggest problems that mankind is dealing with. AI will be at the forefront of it, and obviously NVIDIA and other companies that follow suit and work with them mm -hmm. are going to be at the forefront. So it's, it's very important. Yeah, Scott, I want to try to squeeze in a couple more questions here. One, yeah, what are some other companies keeping an eye out for, and is anybody even close to NVIDIA right now? Yeah, I, I think some of the big guys. I think Meta, you got to watch out for. They've got the infrastructure. They've got a huge base already. So if they can get an actual semiconductor, AI semiconductor up quickly and start using that to their advantage, uh, Google's got a lot of money and right. research poured into this. So I think the competition is coming, but I think they're probably six months to a year behind NVIDIA. And that's really important to realize. It takes a long time to get these foundries set up, sometime upwards of two years before they're up and running. So they've got a big jump start and everybody's going to be chasing them. You know, uh, Scott, call me skeptical cynical, if you will, but when I read about a company doing this great, I have to think back to the big bubble burst in the tech world back in the 90s, then the housing market falling out. What is its Achilles heel? Is there something out there that could pull the rug out from underneath NVIDIA? Yeah, absolutely. I, I look at it from the perspective of cybersecurity. Obviously, if there's vulnerabilities inside AI semiconductors, that could cause a huge ripple effect and everybody to back up and pause. And are there? Probably. Have they spent billions of dollars in doing research preventing that? Sure. But there's always that possibility, just like any microprocessor, CPU, graphics processing unit, and AI semiconductors. So the cybersecurity implications and vulnerabilities really need to be buttoned down solid so people can you know, adopt them and not be so nervous. Okay, Scott Schober, good stuff. Thank you so much, and uh, we look Thank forward to chatting with you again on the line.